One, two, three, four. Hi and welcome to Programming Paradigms in Term 1 2016. My name's Will and I'm the unit coordinator and one of the lecturers uh, for this unit. Matt Cooper and I are writing it and teaching it together. Let me tell you a little bit about what this unit's about and how it's going to work. But first, let me apologise that the lip sync is off in this video. Uh, there's a little bit of a problem with the video recording software I'm using that the audio drifts over time. I'll fix that for future videos, hopefully, but I ran out of time to fix it for this one. So by the time you've reached this unit, you've probably learnt a few different programming languages, or at least taken a few different programming language units. So you may have met uh, Python and Java and C, but those languages all have a similar mental model, a similar way of thinking about how programming works, that they're, they're all what we call imperative languages. And we'll meet that paradigm in the first lecture. But that's not the only way of thinking about programming. And sometimes using different techniques uh, can help us as engineers make life easier for ourselves. And particularly, we'd like to introduce you to functional programming because it's becoming quite important to industry at the moment for reasons which we will see during the course. So the way the unit's going to work is that First of all, I'm going to teach you about a topic from a programmer's perspective. I'm going to show you how you can do things and how this makes life easier for you as a programmer, helps you to do more complicated, more interesting things without the program itself becoming unbearably complicated. Um, and then Matt Cooper is going to follow along and go into more theoretical depth on those topics. And so we're going to have about four of these blocks where we, we start from a programmer's perspective and then go into, the, into theory behind it later on. The first one will introduce things around functional programming, uh, type theory, type inference, and different ways of thinking about typing as well. The second one will start looking at how we can easily do asynchronous and concurrent uh, programming and uh, some relatively easy, easy models, uh, at least easy models to think about uh, for that. Uh, the third block is going to introduce you to a kind of mathematics that you might not have come across called category theory. And it's going to answer questions like, what's this monad thing that you read about sometimes on the web and some programmers talk about anyway? And towards the end, we're going to look at big data platforms and uh, particularly at Apache Spark. Uh, the language that we're going to use through the course is one called Scala. And it's a growing language in popularity. It's used by places like Twitter and Atlassian and Coursera and LinkedIn. Some fairly well-known companies do engineering in the Scala language. Um, the name comes from it being a scalable language, that it's quite good for systems as you grow. Um, but it's also useful to us from a teaching perspective because it's a language that has a lot of different programming con uh, concepts in it. And so we can teach you uh, about all of these different uh, ways of thinking about programming and these different aspects using the one language. So while teaching you a language that's interesting to industry and that's interesting to uh, some very interesting jobs in industry. There are some quite exciting um, Scala development jobs out there. Uh, generally, you'll find that um, programming jobs that are doing things in Scala are probably trying to do more interesting things than ones that were trying to do it in Java, which it tends to be used a lot for business systems, for instance. Um, I should mention that we are rolling out a new program across computer science this term. And so quite a lot of the material is being written as we go. And so in some places, it may feel a little bit bumpy, uh, particularly uh, for this course. There's not a textbook that fits the course exactly. And there's not, at least to start with, a comprehensive set of bullet point notes, say. So the a lot of the teaching will happen via videos, whether they are videos recorded like this, whether they're recording programming live on the screen, whether they're happening in the lecture theatre and through the tutorials, uh, things that we will get you to try and do in the Scala language to uh, demonstrate particular concepts. Um, 
many apologies that there's not yet a comprehensive note, uh, set of notes but it does mean that please pay attention to the uh, the video recordings and the tutorials they are our main content delivery mechanisms for this term i've made this longer than i planned uh, so i'm going to sign off now and see you in lectures that start next week um, i can't say good to see you yet because i'm talking to a camera but at least good to be seen by you <laughs>